Tina Koto, Kato YouTube. Today we are about the Himato fish hook and have a look at our snood lashing and how to do a no hole um, binding or lashing on, on one of these. Now, it took me quite a while to work out a way that I like to do this um, for what I'm reading and stuff. There's quite a few different ways, so this may or may not work. On the sort of actual carving that you have on your Heimato, if you're um, trying to relash yours, um, I did um, change things up a bit from what I saw because what I saw I wasn't convinced was a very strong lashing. So this one here is kind of it's almost inverted to what a lot of the ones online and um, in books I read were about. Um, and so. And again, and for the other point I guess is yeah, for, for different sorts of um, lashings for a heimato, for a fish hook, you do need different shapes, uh, shaped ends. Um, so yeah, may or may not work, but this is this is my snood lashing. So I start off with this, it will become the necklace cord, it will be plaited um, later. Um, for each, I use for this uh, one metre strands folded in half. So three one metre strands folded in half for this. There's, um, what you want to do if you're replicating this this idea so for the no hole part i like to try to wrap it like this there's a cross in the middle there and the lashing will go over the top and secure this now making this part flat means that the um well, as flat as you can that the final lashing will be flatter as well so there we go so next step is the whipping. So we're going to do a whipping on here. Now, it is pretty tricky to see how the whipping works um, with black cord on black cord and this tiny stuff too. So if you're not sure, check out my other video which explains what I'm actually going to be doing right now in a bit more detail and easier to see with some um, bigger cord. So I am doing some wraps around at the moment. Ooh, what am I doing? I've got that tangled up already. Okay, that was our screen, sorry. I'm going to start that again. Really important here that you don't get a bit tangled up, that you do know which part you're holding on to. Okay, so making the loop. loop goes on here now if you make it up a little bit high that's okay because you can slide it down okay so that's going that way cool it does get tangled up in your necklace cord bit so you do need to keep these untangled So that's the other end of the whipping and just pulling in tight there. So it snugs in the first wrap. Right. Can't stress enough how important it is to keep this untangled and know where your where your different bits of cord are. Okay, so we've got about five. Five wraps there now, that will be enough I think for this. Okay, so holding that end while we pull pull the whipping through. Making sure we don't end up with a knot in there. Okay. Alright, there we go. So we've got the whipping on there and then the string commit here which is going to become our lashing. So now's the time when you can slide it down. So you've got to get the other end of the whipping out to be able to slide it down onto the top of the pendant. Got just aligning the uh, lashing under there. Alright, so there we are ready to start our lashing now. Okay, so we tighten up the um, the whipping now by pulling on both ends. You gotta be careful with this. You'll pull it tight, but if you put it too tight, it will break. Either the ponamu or the 
to the cord. Okay, so now I can get rid of this piece here. We're done with that. Okay. So, so the next bit you need is uh, we're going to set up the pull through cord. Okay, so this is what we use to um, tuck the end of the, the lashing cord in at the end. Now, you could, for this lashing, you can put it in several places. It's up to you. You can do a bit of trial and error. I've found the best place for me is on this side. Um, I'm going to go right underneath that necklace cord as well. And this side kind of sticking out towards the side as well, not right from the top. Come on, you cheeky monkey. I'll get one of my high tech carving tools, toothpick. Might help. Let me just get that one through. There we go. So that's going to want to stick out the side, like so. Right, make sure our crosses are aligned in the middle. Okay, now we can start our wraps. So the wraps start with this cord here coming out of the whipping. And we start by going down. The first one, the alignment changes pretty quickly. So we go down. And following the line of these are uh, initial the necklace cords, we go underneath all of that part and then we head starting them back up. And this is where the cross happens. Cross in here, so we just want to try and start making the cross um, happen right in the middle. But now, this is where the first kind of change happens. So this goes out to the side, and this one comes out almost perpen kind of perpendicular to the, um, to the ponamu. Okay, so with that one there, so that comes out this way. We keep going around, so we're going to go down again this time. We cross back over. And this one, not the first time around. This one, oh, hold on. See our cross here hasn't been in the middle. We have to just adjust that one up a little bit. Try and get them aligned because this one here as it crosses over needs to start going up. We're heading up towards the top, not towards the bottom, which is how a lot of these uh, snood lashings go. They go up towards the top, uh, sorry, they go down towards the bottom. Whereas I decided that I want to do it in reverse and lash up towards the top, which is what I'm doing now. As I lay it on, it goes up, 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 up. The same at the top there, which covers up the... Uh, the necklace cord that goes over the top and secures it down. Um, the reason I chose to do this is because with a lashing, the um, the cord needs to have something bigger, big, to be pulled down onto. And with the direction of pull with this stuff, well, with these ones here, they're all pulling, being pulled down. So that's why I figured you go around that way, you're pulling them down that way. Whereas if you start at the top, and they can fall off the end pretty easy. Um, yes. So this way, it lashes it down to the, the bigger parts, down towards the, the wider part here, and up towards the wider part between here and here of the um, ponamu uh, part you're binding it to. So we're lashing along like this, almost there. Now this is kind of like the talkie, you go as far as you um, are comfortable with this. With this one, what, what, you kind of need to stop up at the whipping. But what I really like about this lashing is that it hasn't got a hole. And what that means is that this is actually a functional lashing as well. You know, you don't, it's, um, it's not just for decoration. And you can see a little bit of the original um, cord here that is the necklace cord so you kind of get a feeling for you know, I guess the strength and the practicality of it you know it hasn't been weakened by a hole um, I think that's, that's a I think that's a really cool thing okay I think we're going to stop there 
yeah, one more. Actually, might go a bit too far. One more round. So now we've come around the corner and we're at our pull through loops. This is where our pull through is going to go. It's going to go underneath these are bottom wraps here. So at this point, you need to chop off a section just enough to pull it through if you're still attached. It's always the moment of truth. You hope this part goes well. Okay, so that's just being put through the pull through cord loop. So I'll just put it down snug now. Now we'll see if we can do this with my fingers. Might need the pliers for it. I'm going to put my thumb on the lashing to so it doesn't smash it too much. We'll see how we go. <laughs> right. So there we go. So that's been pulled through and tucked under. So now we can chop the end off and have a look at the finished results. There we go. Tuck that in. And we're done. So that's the idea. Make that focus. So that's the idea with no hole snood lashing. And obviously, the uh, slower you go and the flatter you keep that, the tidier it will be. Now, this one here does look a little bit on the skinny side in terms of lashing size. Um, by playing around with having different uh, shaped bits here, like this could um, this corner could come up a bit. I don't want to say it's a bad description. This uh, this line along here, we could angle it up, um, which means that these um, these wraps here wouldn't get as congested. They could come out a little bit better. Um, so that's one way you could change this um, by starting with the whipping up up higher. Um, you get more wraps in on both the top and the bottom. Um, yeah, there's so many variations of how you actually do the ponamu on this and what result that will have on the lashing too. Um, so yeah, maybe there's some more quoted all about that in the future. But anyway, that's the, that's the basic principle of, of how I've figured out a good way to do the hey mato no hole lashing. That's where your crosses are there, where the core crosses. Well, often they cross on the back, the back side, when you go the other way and wrap. And top to bottom. But yeah, I haven't been convinced that's a way that they are uh, stay strong. Alright. Good everybody. Namahi. Namahi nui. Tina koto. Tina koto. Tina tato katoa.